Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink. And for today's video, finally getting a card made for this week's Color Throwdown Challenge. So I pulled out Simon Says Stamps Beautiful Flowers 2 stamp set. I've used the first one many, many times in tons of videos. This one I've used many times as well. This is, I think, my fourth or fifth video using this set. And I decided to do a little easy faux or no watercoloring. I did a similar video, which I'll link at the end of this one, um, using Wendy Vecchi uh, ink pads. Basically any ink pad's gonna work that is water reactive. So today I'm gonna use Distress Inks. So first off, I want to heat emboss my images. So my stamp platform, I have the stamps. I am stamping them twice because one watercolor paper has a bit of texture to it. And two, these are really like, this main image is huge. So stamped it twice with clear embossing ink. And then I am using Hero Arts White Satin Pearl embossing powder just because it's pretty. <laughs> so coating everything with the embossing powder. I didn't clean off like that big stamp. I didn't clean it off properly last time. So it did pick up a little bit of like the black ink I'd used the last time I made the stamp. Don't really care. I'm not too concerned about it. With this embossing powder, you can kind of see that like there's those little darker areas. Um, I still don't care. It's not even going to show up once I add all the color and whatnot. So clean up my mess a little bit here and then I'm just going to lay out my little flower sack cloth that I've been showing in videos recently. I am really liking this for, you know, picking up some of the stray splatter and mess I tend to make. So I'm just laying this out and then I am just taking my little Distress Ink mini cubes and literally applying the color directly to these images. So it's going to look like a hot mess. So the color challenge this week is like kind of a mauve purple, green, and cream. So I'm using two shades of each just to give it a little bit of extra something. So I use milled lavender and seedless preserves for the flowers. And then I'm using shabby shutters and peeled paint for the leaves. Looks like a mess. <laughs> then I'm spraying this heavily with water. Now you do need to be a little careful because if purple and green mix, they will turn brown. It will get muddy, it'll get ugly. So there's areas there where the colors are starting to kind of travel over the images and, you know, create colors that I don't want. So I kind of stopped that up with the cloth and then I sped up the drying process with my heat tool. You could let it air dry, but I wanted to make sure it was dry before, you know, things could travel and start muddying and whatnot. And then I decided to press the milled lavender again over the flowers and spray it again with the water just to kind of intensify it a little bit. And then in the end, off camera, after I die cut, there's all that space there on the left of this watercolor paper that I didn't want to go to waste. So I ended up actually heat embossing the individual flower and leaves a couple more times and, you know, pressing the ink, spraying it, drying it, die cutting it, etc. cetera. Um, so then I'll end up with more than I'm showing here. So after everything's completely dry, you always want to make sure everything is dry before you start die cutting because you can easily tear the cardstock like it, it can just shred sometimes so everything's completely dry so i'm using the coordinating wafer dies to die cut out these images and then like i said i ended up stamping and embossing to use up the rest of the watercolor paper because it doesn't it looks clean on cam like on camera but in real life like i still had some like splatters and mess like i wouldn't really be able to use it for anything else but i also wanted extra flowers because i had a plan of making you know a big cluster on my card so i die cut everything and then ended up stamping and, you know, inking up in water and spraying the remaining images and whatnot. So yeah, this requires no skill. <laughs> you can do this with anything, any sort of ink that's water reactive. So experiment with it. You don't need to have any fainting, fancy painting techniques, etc. Like literally apply ink and spray. The previous video I used um, my mini ink blending tools to blend ink that way and then sprayed it. This time I just applied it directly to the paper, just whatever floats your boat. So for my card base, I have some ivory cardstock and I have Simon's quilted hearts background. And I am inking up the background with that same clear, um, uh, clear embossing ink and then using the Hero Arts white satin pearl embossing powder on this. So it ends up being very, very subtle, but it has that sheen, you know, that nice pearly look 
that this embossing powder gives. But again, it's subtle because this background is, you know, very just little dots and little hearts. So I'm going to melt this with my heat tool. And then I decided, I was like, I want some splatter. <laughs> I need something more than just, you know, the plain background. So I laid this in my little splat box and I have um, peeled paint oxide spray. And to shake these, you don't shake them. You basically ring them like a bell to mix it up um, so that you don't clog the nozzle or anything like that. And then I held it really far away and just did one, one spray, one light spray. This stuff dries really, really quickly, but I just wanted to make sure I got it dry before I ended up accidentally smearing it or anything like that. And then um, in the process of doing that, I did get a little bit of the spray on the inside, just right along the bottom and it was bugging me. So it's like, I'm going to fix that in a minute. So I wanted to stamp this large flower image on the inside of the card as well. So, and then I, for this, I pulled out um, the milled lavender oxide ink because the milled lavender distress ink, um, any, well, any of the distress inks aren't the greatest for stamping with. And I also just prefer the look of the oxide ink when I'm stamping images. So stamp that and then ended up deciding to spray that um, peeled paint oxide spray on the inside of the card as well. I just held it even further away just to, so it wasn't like as intense in one little spray and that was enough. So let that dry, which again, took no time at all because when you do a really light spray of these, they dry almost instantly. And then for the sentiments, I'm just using sentiments from that same Beautiful Flowers 2 stamp set. So I pulled those out and stamped them onto some slate cardstock with the clear embossing ink. And these I'm embossing with a detail white embossing powder, not the satin pearl. So heat embossed all of those with the detail white embossing powder. And then I die cut them with Simon's uh, sentiment labels wafer dies. And now to create my little cluster, I have that large floral images, that large floral image and then all the individual, you know, flowers and leaves. I laid them out how I wanted them on my card. And then this old, old but tr trust, tested and true, I can't talk today, tested and true trick of the press and seal cling wrap. Um, rolling that out, laying it on top, it kind of just clings to everything, holds it in place. And then I use my pencil after flipping this over, I just use my pencil to mark where the edges of the actual card is. So that when I apply my foam tape, I'm not going over the edges, making this a lot easier. So it just gives me that little visual guide of where I can place all my foam tape. So I just stick my foam tape on there and then I can line up the card base again with those pencil lines I had made. That's also why it's really nice to, ha to have the pencil lines. And then I can peel off that cling wrap and I actually, I end up saving the cling wrap and like, you know, reusing it over and over and over again until it's like too full of dust or whatever, like it's not clinging anymore. So this one box of cling wrap I, has lasted me, I'm not even kidding, so many years, just years, because I keep one in my studio and then I have one in my kitchen. So anywho, um, flipped over my card base and then I just trimmed off the excess with my scissors. You could leave it if you wanted to put your card in a large, like a large envelope, you know, because it looks really nice with everything hanging off, which I've done with previous cards, but this time I knew I was going to use a shimmery A2 sized envelope. So I trimmed off that excess and then I adhered my sentiments with some craft tacky glue. And then of course I have to add some bling. And I had the Studio Cadia June crystals sitting here that I used on my last cards. <laughs> and the, per the shade of purple was just perfect. So I very liberally placed these all over my card. And then I'm just going to glue them into place with that craft tacky glue, just picking them up with my jewel picker and then pressing them into the adhesive. And then this card is done. So as always, I will have a link below the video to my blog post. I will have um, a supply list with links, all the supplies used. I will also link to the color throwdown challenge blog post. People have been asking me about that. Um, I always link to it in my blog post when I'm doing cards for that challenge. So just check out my blog below. Link will be in the description box, the very first link and then supplies, etc. So you can check that out if you guys are interested. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting on my videos. I very, very much appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next one. Bye.